All right, shouldn't take us too long to do this because you've seen distributed property a lot already this year, right? We've done a ton of it, so it shouldn't be that hard. This is just a little refresher again for you. Uh, so let's just do one in general without putting actual numbers in there. Then we'll put some numbers in there, okay? So here's basically what distributed property is. This is about as basic and simple as you could get with distributed property. So when do you use distributed properties? When you're multiplying, okay? You don't use it for addition. You don't use it for exponents. A lot of people think you use it for exponents, but there's no distributive property for exponents, okay? It's only when you have something that's multiplied times something that's being either added or subtracted. Everybody got that? Okay, so you got something that's multiplied times something's being added or subtracted. Do we have that situation here? Absolutely. A is being multiplied by this parentheses, and inside the parentheses that's being added. So what do we do? We take that A and we basically just multiply it by everything in the parentheses, but this is how we do it. You've seen this dozens of times just this year from me, correct? Mm -hmm. You take that A and then I put a little, sometimes they put arrows on there. I don't put the arrow, I just put a little arc, a little circle thingy. All right, so I'm multiplying. When I do this, that means I'm multiplying these two things together. So that means A times B. So what is A times B? It's just AB. That's it, okay? You can't do anything else with it. And then you look at the sign, what's going on inside of here, in this particular situation is being added, so we put a plus. What if this was a minus sign? Then we put a minus there, okay, pretty obvious. Now we take that A and we multiply it by the other thing inside the parentheses. Now we multiply it by the C, all right? What's A times C? AC, anything else we can do with that? No, nope, there's nothing else we can do with that. There you go. So that's just a very general form, not specific, right? We didn't put any specific numbers in there but that's kind of what they're gonna do. So for instance, let's say, um, let's say we had this. There's a couple ways you can multiply this together, right? You could, now if they're just all numbers, here's how I would do it. Here's how I personally would do it. I would add the two numbers in here together and then just multiply it by this. So let's do that in our head. What's four plus five? It's nine, nine times three is, 27, okay? But let's see if the distributed property actually works, right? I mean, I could just tell you this stuff and you're like, okay, I could do that, but do I know that that really is true? Well, this will show us if it's really true or not. So I know this is supposed to come out to be 27. Everybody understand that? It's four plus nine, or five is nine times three is 27. Let's see if it works with the distributed property. Now, I wouldn't, if all I had to do was just answer this question right here, I probably would not use the distributive property. Okay, I would add these things up, multiply it by three. But let's just see if it works. So what do I, what do, I do? Three times four, correct? It's kind of like my AB. Put a plus, and then we go what? Three times five. Let's see what we get. Three times four is 12, plus three times five is 15. Now if I add those up, what do I get? I get 27, just like I did up there. So does the distributive property work? Absolutely. We just showed you with regular numbers that it does work. So you should be pretty confident that distributive property is a legitimate thing that we can do in math, right? But we're not always just going to have just a bunch of regular numbers. You know there's going to be variables. And why in the world are there variables? Well, if you take physics or chemistry or things like that, the variables are super important because they stand for things. They could stand for acceleration, for velocity. They could stand for all kinds of stuff, all right? Um, and then what you have to do sometimes, you have to multiply things together with a variable, all right? It's really, really important. So that's why we have variables. That's why we have letters because you couldn't do physics. You couldn't do those things without them. You really couldn't. So that's why we learn the stuff in our basic algebra classes because people say, well, Letters, that's stupid, that's not math. Um, well, it is, all right? So that's what we're doing with letters. So let's do an example. I'm doing number one on the worksheet, okay? So I've got negative six and a plus eight. All right, everybody work on this one, okay? I'll give you a second, You're taking notes on this, right? So let's, uh, let's write this out and let's get an answer. It's actually pretty simple. It's the very first problem. <clears throat> probably just do it in your head, couldn't you? If not, we'll do the little marks here, okay? So I take that negative six, multiply it by the first one, put an addition, put a plus, and then take that negative six and multiply it by this. 
So what is negative 6 times a? Negative 6a, right? Now you could put a plus here if you wanted to, right? Because this is a plus. But let's hold off on that for just a second because I want to see what my sign's going to be when I multiply these two things together. Whatever the sign's going to be, that's the sign I'm going to put in the middle, okay? If, it, if they multiply to be a positive, then I'll put a plus. If they multiply to be a negative, I'll put a minus. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. So let's do it. It's negative 6 times 8. Well, we just finished a worksheet on that. What's a negative times a positive? It's always negative. Remember, different signs are always negative. All right? So it's going to be a negative what? 6 times 8 is 48. Now, can I do something with this? Can I add that negative 6 to this negative 48? No, I can't. Okay, they're not like terms. This has an A in it. This does not have an A in it. There's nothing else I can do. I'm done. That's it. That's my answer. Okay? Questions on this? Everybody good? You sure? All right. Let's do another one. Um, really? Okay, let's do this one. Let's do number 10. Looks a little different because a lot of times we'll have that the number that's being multiplied by the parentheses on the left-hand side. It doesn't have to be on the left-hand side, does it? Like for instance, three times five, is that the same as five times three? Yeah. Sure it is. Okay, it doesn't matter what order that you multiply, okay? I haven't done properties in a long time. I think it's a commutative property. Yeah, back and forth. Mr. Rao, am I right on that? Three times five, five times three, is that commutative property? I haven't taught that in a long time. Yeah, reflexive. Uh, reflexive, isn't it like just five equals five? That's the identity. But what's the one? Okay. That's called reflexive because it looks like a reflection. Right. What's the commutative property then? Three plus five is five plus three? That's also reflexive. That's reflexive. What's commutative? commutative? I forget. I used to teach this stuff all the time. I haven't taught it in years. Order doesn't make a difference. So AB equals BA. Oh, okay. So AB equals BA. That's commutative property. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, good. Thanks. It's not. Well, yeah, it is. It is the same thing. So that is commutative property. A equals A. That's reflexive. Right, like that right there. That's reflexive. Right. Identity would be like five times one. See, he hasn't taught it in a long time either. So when you don't use it, you lose it. So I was the same way. I, I had to remind myself. I couldn't remember what they were. It's been years since I've... Because usually teach this in Algebra 1. It's probably been... Well, it's been probably 18 years. I think my first year coming here, I taught Algebra 1. And I don't think I've taught it since then. So it's been 18 years since I've taught Algebra 1. So that's the last time I taught that stuff. All right. Okay, let's keep going. So with all that said... My whole point was this. It doesn't matter what order you multiply them together. All right, so let's do this. Number 10 says negative 6p plus 7. Now, they put a dot, and there's a good reason why they put a dot. But I probably wouldn't. If I was to write this problem on a quiz or a test, I probably would not put a dot. But they do. So I'll, sh I'll show you the way they do it so you can see it because that's what the worksheet says. What do you think would be a better way? If you're a math teacher, what would be a better way to write negative four times all this? You could put it in front, but what if it was going to be on the right-hand side? I can't just do that. I can't just put it next to it because that looks like it would be what? What would it look like? If I just did this, it would look like it would be minus four, correct? All right, but if I put it in parentheses, that's a little bit better. Do you agree? So... But the book, or the book, the worksheet people, they put a dot for times and then the negative four, all right? Just so you do realize that when you look at the worksheet, okay? Everybody with me on that? So now what can we do here? I'm going to take that negative four and let's distribute it this way from right to left this time. It's the same thing, isn't it? All right, you guess? Sure it is. So it's negative four times negative six P. What's negative times a negative? Positive, six times four is 24 and then... P. Let's do the next one. Negative four, 4 times 7. What's negative 4 times positive 7? It's negative 28. So we put a minus there for the negative. You could, if you wanted to, put plus negative 28. That'll work. 
It'll be fine. I wouldn't mark it wrong. Okay, but it just looks a lot better like that. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. Instead of having the two signs next to each other. All right, let me see if there's anything else on this. Yeah, really everything else is just super easy. It's it's all the same kind of problem. There's really nothing on here that's any more difficult than this. Okay? Is what? I still can't hear you. A packet? No, this is just my answer key because I don't have a front and back on this. It's still front and back. All right. Any questions on this stuff? Any questions? Since this stuff is so easy, I think I have one more. I think there's six worksheets in this little section. Let me just double check real quick. Six. Yeah, it only goes to six. Um, so we're not going to have a quiz on this. We're just going to have a test on it. Okay. All right. It's, it's just too easy to break it up into quizzes. So I'm just going to have one big test. Hopefully that will help you on this marking period. Hopefully. Okay. Now some of you guys, you're leaving a bunch blank. Like I, I'm looking at it and like, like a quarter of your worksheet is just left blank. Okay. That's not a good first impression on this stuff. Okay. The reason I'm going back to the basics is so that you have an opportunity to actually do the problems. If you're not doing the problems, you're not going to learn it. Okay. So don't be lazy, right? Be strong, be tough mentally. Okay. Be mentally tough. You can have all the muscles in the world, but if you're not mentally tough, that's not going to help you out. All right. So be mentally tough. Do every single problem on every single worksheet. All right. You got to make a commitment to yourself, make a commitment to this class, make a commitment to learning. Okay. That you're going to do every problem on every worksheet. Okay. Because I'm telling you, if I continue to see it, I'm going to take more than just one point off or two points off. Okay. I might take four points off. Okay. And just give you a one. If I see a big chunk of stuff that you don't even try, all you got to do is attempt them. I'm not grading these if they're right or wrong. I'm just grading. If you just try, it's just effort. That's what homework grades are in my class. Anyway, it's just effort. So put out the effort, be tough. Don't quit. School's not over yet. You still got like two months left. That's a lot of time. Two months is a lot of time. Okay. So let's keep going. Let's keep working hard.